Hello, and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. This game is from the Legend of the Stars qualifier number one. And you can find the link in the description to post about this tournament. But this is the, the first qualifier for the end of year tournament sponsored by Legend of the Stars. And there's going to be four main qualifiers with four players qualifying from each of those and then a fifth qualifier for backup slots in case well, for in the event that people aren't able to uh, be there on the day for the actual finals so check it out try sign up and uh well, let's sign up and try to qualify. The two players we have, Spatula Can of Baw. This is Blast Chilled. And he's playing Cyber. And we have Thomas Hyatt just back from his ban. And he's gone Seraphim. The map is Stella Maris WM 1v1. Made by Mad Mozart still don't know what WM means and I'm not saying it's not double M as somebody may have commented on YouTube it's WM so it's not uh, his initials the initials of Mad Mozart Thomas Hyatt going second air you really have to go second air in this map so one of the things about this map is there is a shit ton of mexes everywhere you have a lot of in the water and well not so many in the water but in the on the islands in the water you have these little plateaus here the hydrocarbon you have a lot a lot of mass all over this land and what the WM version does is actually creates separate areas of land other on the normal stellamers this is all just one landmass and there's no terrain except maybe well this is a plateau on on the normal stella but the all this front part is uh, connected there's no mountains so this sort of compartmentalizes and you can uh, say this can be, become quite vulnerable to drops uh, just allows some different things to happen and stops stops you being able to reinforce very quickly in all areas and everywhere if you drop your opponent's side transport and there's already an inti so transport rushing on this map is dangerous I have to say it is although you're in the corners but it's only a 10x10 map so basically trans rushing on 10x10 map is is risky Thomas just got punished has to make an anti-air now he's going to lose his transport don't leave your transport over the engineers you see he moved it away there because the transport has a well it deals damage when it dies so always move your transport away from your engineers so that it doesn't die and harm your engines especially if you're aeon because you have the lowest health engineers so if the transport hits them it does like 100 damage they're likely going to die to the dying transport. Spatch the can, making more factories, getting his transport across, and he has air control. Also made a mantis to go across here to uh, scupper any attempts to drop his side by Thomas Hyatt. Another transport from Thomas on the way with a huge amount of assists. He's surely stalling hard yet needs to really add some pigeons very very soon only 260 power income but he's gonna fill up that transport and start dropping and he's gonna have quite decent decently well it's gonna be a lot slower expansion than what blast Jill has blast being very careful going for uh, factory first of all these engineers is building quite slowly so I guess he's stalling as well yes he is these trees 
Uh, basically all the trees on this map are grouped, but you can see this mantis running through here. Maybe you can't see it on the video, but in a replay it's relatively clear. You can see the path, so that broke the trees here. But uh, yeah, grabbing tree reclaim can give you very nice advantage on this map, especially th these trees here, because you don't really have to break them. So we're going to see a factory here, and that's going to make, make engineers, and all this is going to be grabbed. There's also rocks mixed in, so again, natural reclaim, people uh, people can easily win and lose games based on how they handle the natural reclaim on a map. You got to respect it and make sure you gather it up efficiently. Those engineers, a lot of mass, already have 16 mass extractors and he's barely even started he's gonna have uh, probably like f over 30 maxes maybe close to 40 I would say that's immediately 80 mass income with no t2 maxes uh, shit ton of mass couple that with all the reclaim and you're gonna need to spam power heavy so we have three engineers here building power two here these guys trying to get some reclaim from the trees. Fortunately, they're kind of broken. But not all of it. And that's going to help him. So Thomas Hyatt ahead on power. With this transport, he dropped on the hydrocarbon. Built it. And then moved over across here. So his uh, expansion to this side is slower. Nobody walking an engineer to here. So look, this... this People need to just walk here. There's a beach here. This is the entrance to this little cone of land. And uh, I guess it's not a cone. You know what I mean? You don't need to drop here. Just walk. Grab the big rocks, some trees, and the mixes. Build a factory here as well. Definitely want a factory on this piece of land. And you can also use this piece of land to... Well, if you have hover, like Thomas does, you can make arties from here. You can make arties, put them on the edge of the cliff and kill some stuff in the water. And also make engineers to reclaim the wrecks from naval fights. So we have the naval build power going up. You need to make a lot of navy on this map. A lot of frigates. So it's uh, quite cramped navy wise because of all these islands and then this narrow choke in the middle navy is hugely important t2 navy can kill all of this mass here can't really kill stuff in here unless you have the missile cruisers which thomas does and blast does not and because there's so much mass you can go t2 navy very quickly here Build power, build power, build power. That's what you need. So you need a lot of build power to get the natural reclaim, and then you need a lot of build power in naval factories and also air factories. Because, of course, air is very important, and CAD really can turn those naval battles in many cases. Here we have some frigates doing a bit of raiding. They can kill the three mexes here on the edge. They can kill this stuff in the water. Now, one thing about this map actually that's never been fixed is that one of these mexes is not buildable in the water on each side. So maybe Mozart can fix that. He really ought to. <laughs> Being as this map does get used a fair bit, tournaments and ladder. Right now, we're looking pretty even, but Blast Shield, because of his site faster expansion on this side, has more total mass. He also is doing a bit better on the reclaim front. Quite a bit better, actually. I think it's because of this right here. Definitely a good idea. You want to build a factory just to grab this reclaim. Now, poor... This engineer is just running through the reclaim, so he probably has a full mass bar. He does. Once your mass bar gets to, like, 80% full, I think around 80%, 90%, then uh, units on patrol and attack move will no longer reclaim because they're probably going to overflow, so they just carry on their route. So now, 
he goes back to reclaiming after breaking the fucking trees because Masbar isn't full anymore. Tom is having trouble spending his mass. So maybe it's time for T2 Navy. Needed to keep spamming a lot more factories than this, I think. You can also use the engineer or the engineer, the ACU, to build factories on the side here. But the danger with that is that uh, your opponent can run across and start killing your build power here. But certainly not. I mean, it's not the worst idea. You can also build torp defense to protect them. So we have subs and frigates. So let's see what the subs can do. They subs have uh, quite low damage and a higher cost than frigates, but of course, get to do all their damage for free against frigates. That's quite nice. Always, it is generally good to have a few, and on this map, because there's underwater mexes, they can also do a bit of damage to those. Thomas used his commander to move across here, and uh, that's to, again, defend against drops that may come across the water, because basically you're the same distance here, obviously, to here, because, you know, the map is square, so corner to corner, obviously the same distance, so dropping across and doing a proxy is uh, pretty common, so we saw Blast make a Mantis to defend that, and Thomas sent his AC over there. Also building tanks to kill any drops, or maybe he's going to drop them himself. He has T2 Air now making his T2P gen, let's see the Eco looking pretty decent. Bit of a stall getting his... But that's uh, that's pretty much fine, really. He still has a huge amount of reclaim to grab. Let's see. Got most of this, though. And, uh, yeah. TP Gen does last have one. He does not. Does he have T2? He has T2 Navy. No T2 Air, though. And Thomas only going T2 now. You can see this bar rising and there's no uh, unit building here. The engineers, so you would see the beam go here if there's a unit building from the engineers. That's how you tell that they're upgrading. You can see now uh, all the beams going to here rather than to the factory. That's how you know the factory is upgrading as well as the health bar or the supposed health bar moving up, it's actually the upgrade bar. Well, I guess it is actually the health of the uh, new building. So, this build power over here gonna be taken out. Quite a lot of units sent this way to uh, kill very little, and now Thomas is gonna have to retreat them because Blast is already moving out, and he has gone for two T2 subs now. He's made T2 subs, he has a decent amount of air, and Thomas is making Nothas, I think he needs to be making Torp Bombers right now, and the problem for him now is, well, these these subs have to be Torped, basically. Because he is a Seraphim, he does not have T2 subs of his own, he only has Destroyers and Cruisers on T2 Navy. And those T2 subs do very well versus his destroyers. Because the destroyer's torp defense is not that effective versus them. And also these uh, subs are cybern, so they have high damage, higher than the Aeon ones. And they also have less HP, and they have personal stealth. So he has to have units on top of them to spot them. And now he has to torp them. Now, if he had like three or four tor uh, torp bombers instead of these two Nautas, he would be in such a good spot. He could torp basically all these pretty quickly. And that would be a lot of mass wasted by... Oh, look at that. Destro's going to die. Oh, Jesus. You can see how brutal the subs are. Just wrecking that. That destroyer, so the frigates help too, for sure. But look at the damage on the subs. This guy already has 1,900, 1,200, 800. And now we'll see the switch to destroyers. He actually made a cruiser. 
after the subs are now going for a destroyer. And this destroyer, this cruiser can come over to this expansion and start doing some damage. Now, there's no upgraded mechs here, but uh, so it's not going to be too bad if he loses some mechs here, but certainly the front is going to go down. He's going to lose some massing them there. I don't know if it's worth it to send a T2 ships this direction quite yet. Might be better focusing on killing the navy of Thomas. Thomas has more total mass, but let's see the mass income. He has a decent number of T2 mechs, some storages in there as well. 10 and some storages. And blast behind. He's got 8. One of them is in the water. Interesting. And most of them in his base right here. You can see he has very little defenses here. So he could be vulnerable to drops. Certainly. Doesn't really have many units at all. Actually has just the one mantis. So Thomas being more careful here. Has the ACU and units here. Oh, he's built T2 Arty. Interesting. Very expensive unit. And he also has T2 Commander. Now one thing that is very nice in this map. Can be extremely strong is... Uh, TML commander. Now it's not going to be too strong right now because as we saw Blast has all of his shit here. All of his valuable things that you would actually want to TML are basically here. But now you can see the, the mechs is going grey further to the left so as that goes on a TML com in the water or even just maybe here or so could do huge amounts of damage. And he already has T2 which is basically a prerequisite for the attack pack so that you can actually make those missiles very quickly if you use a t1 commander for attack pack you kind of fucked up basically and you're gonna have to have engineers assist that commander to build the missiles in any reasonable time I mean, it's still possible to do it with t1 but you're much better off with t2 safer and faster Another T2P gen going up. Or Spatula. Let's see his fleet. Five T2 subs, two Destros. Looks like he lost his cruiser. Probably two torpedo bombers that are suiciding in here. And there's also six T1 subs and 24 frigates. That is a pretty nice fleet. Thomas, look at this. In contrast, just three Destros and he's moving in. And this is really, really bad for him. He cannot be fighting right now. It's going to get run over. He, see, he can't see all these T2 subs until he actually gets in close. But he should know they're there. And he doesn't even have many more destroyers. Or even any more destroyers than, than Blast does now. And this looks very bad. The fleet is very small. He's overflowing a lot of power as well. And actually going T3. Uh, for the T3 commander you need a lot of assistance on the uh, on the upgrade to get it in a pretty quick time. It takes 3 minutes 20 without assistance. Which is far too slow. You always want to make T3 calm with assistance. What is the plan with this guy? Does he feel... He probably already realizes that this navy is going very badly and he probably can't uh, regain priority because he doesn't have the air to actually use torp bombers to get there and if he can't use torp bombers versus these subs he's in a bad way so he's going T3 and I guess that means he's going to come drop <laughs> which is not a bad call on this map this is definitely a map where you can come drop the difficulty will be if he come drops the how much T2 Navy is around, how many destroyers are there to uh, come after him and he is losing his air, that's also a problem and this looks very good for Blast right now, now it has the income lead had some spare mass Grading quite a lot of mexes and he has dropped engineers into the middle to start reclaiming has a forward naval factory can should probably make some more naval factories maybe 
So you can spam more NGs for reclaim. You could maybe try get factories up here, do some damage here. And maybe even send a T2 ship to the right side, start killing all the rest of this, get rid of it. But actually he's losing his uh, subs. So I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe maybe he's a bit sloppy or maybe some tar bomber suicided in there. But uh, this, is, this is very bad for Thomas. He has no T2 ships left. There's quite a lot of frigates here that can move in and kill pretty much all the engineer build power. But T3 is complete for Thomas and he has a teacher transport ready and waiting. See Thomas's eco. Well, this doesn't look too good. And he has his torp bombers, torp defense next to each other. Cyber Frigate has AOE, so you're gonna lose multiple multiple torp defense with each shot. Where's the commander? Here he is. And there's also a transport with the units on it, which is nice. You can actually fit uh, some units with the with the commander on a teacher transport. You can fit uh, a few arties on there, it's quite nice. Let's see. Oh. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look like Blast has spotted this at all. And it's coming straight to the base. There's two T2 pigeons here. That's actually all of his T2 pigeons. Power wise, most of his power is here as well. He has a few pigeons over here. Commander is nice and safe in the water though, and he's making stealth. You can see he's in full safety mode he's under the water, making stealth. And Thomas is landing, immediately throws up some T1 PDs and sends the tanks in, finds two T2 pigeons here that he should be killing ASAP, should be killing all the T1 pigeons ASAP as well. I'm sure uh, Blast should have started spamming pigeons maybe with these engineers now. Because he's already lost about 700 power as the first of his T2 pigeons goes down. He's trying to get T2 PD up but it's in range of this T2 PD already. Corsairs should be taken out pretty easily by Thomas's anti-air, which he can spam extremely quickly with the commander. Salem's just going to work killing all of this. There's so many T1 pigeons here that it's going to be a big loss, and he's going to have to replace them. Actually, Corsairs coming after Thomas's T2 pigeons, or maybe not Corsairs, but T1 bombers. Oof. Don't want that to happen. How is he going to power these shields? It throws up factories. There's a lot of reclaim here for him to grab thanks to all the dead T2 mexes. Still has not killed this T2 pigeon. This has to die because now look, there's uh, more power being spammed by blast. Maybe, maybe slightly slow to start spamming that. But now throwing up factories and he's going to spam a huge amount of Medusa to try and force this commander away. It's gonna be tough though. And oh, build power going down and a T2 pigeon going down. Does have a T2 engineer. That blast has so much mass now, you can see he's lost. Well, he's paused all of his T1 naval production because he doesn't really need it and he's actually just leaving with the ACU. He saved the T2 NG or maybe made it out of this naval factory and he's gonna start making a uh, T2 pigeon here. What Thomas needs, I think, uh, well, what does he need? He needs TML, certainly. Should have one of those already so he could TML many things here. Because you can see the range. Even just here, he has a lot of range. And he could also TML this naval HQ because those Destros are going to be really bad for him. And also the uh, cruisers as well, of course. Also needs a lot of anti-air in this in his base. He's losing his map rapidly, losing his T2 Mexes over here. But he has 10k mass. 
actually he needs a T2P gen in his new expansion. And he needs to never stop building. Pretty much, I think, yeah, T2P gen over here would have been nice. Or maybe he could have started one before he left with his commander, started a couple of them. Before leaving, the engineers could finish. So right now, he's trying to spam Arties after the... Uh, after this navy, try force the T2 navy away, but there's Medusa building. Let's see how many there are now. Well, not that many. Still struggling for power. Gonna gonna go for T2 air again. He's already lost his naval HQ. Should probably build more uh, P gens here. This nice engineer. The Salem's make landfall. And they're going to take out even more T2Xs. Don't know how this one's still alive, but... Dying now, and he can actually keep walking. Those are going to have to be killed by Arties by, uh... Thomas. So we have th just three Destros and two Cruisers, so that's really not that much Navy. So if he can take out... if He, he could have already taken out this Naval Factory, probably. You only need just two TMLs to, to kill that. If you do it fast enough and it doesn't uh, regen. Thomas. Thomas. Well, the T2 Navy is killing all of this shit. He's lost the, he lost the shield. He's moving into the water now. And that's not good because he can't build anything terribly useful in the water. He's gonna reclaim the fucking Salem. Maybe he, he could actually capture this T2 Naval HQ. Maybe he should have captured the Destro. That would have been pretty sick. Because he doesn't really need mass right now. And he's not building anti-air here. Damn. I think I think he's fucked now. Unfortunately. But I think he could have made this work. I think there's some chances. Definitely. Because there's just so much mass here that could be TML'd, for one thing. The T2 Navy could be killed, and that would allow him to be safe here if he just made some anti air. He could go. Could make T2 land, get flax and stuff, maybe. Ah. Uh, but now he's just in the water trying to make torp defense. With a T3 commander, it's no good. It's just no good. He's actually taken a lot of damage from torpedoes from this Salem. Salem goes down over here to the Arties. And actually, ooh, nice torpedo on the commander for Blast Shield. And Torp Defense. Uh, but now there's just so many Medusa here that even if he gets back on land, it's going to be too late. He's going to have to try and make... Torp defense, or PD, I mean. But there's still T2 ships here. He did take care of the T2 Naval HQ. Looks like he reclaimed it. But, uh... Blast can remake that. And it looks like that's what he's going to do here with this factory. Just go straight to T2 Navy again. And Thomas has lost a lot of income. And has very little power income now. He lost his T2P gens just repeatedly, I think, to T1 bombers. So you can see the wrecks here. And maybe some Corsair, but it seems like mostly a lot of T1 bomber wrecks around. And that actually fucked him. Yeah, if he had... And also lost T1 P gens here. If, maybe if, he, if he'd started T2P gen here... Could have started a couple of T2 pigeons and a shield and then let engineers finish them while he left, while he went and built a base on the other side of the map, but uh, now he has no power. Can't build shit with uh, less than 500 power and he's trying to get these pigeons up and in the water where he can't build anything too useful. But damn. Nice try. Very nice try from Thomas. Almost, almost pulled it back. Maybe, maybe he could have, could have uh, done it a little better. But uh, Blastfield played well. 
nice unit choice going for the subs and maintaining air control protected the subs pretty well and they did a lot of damage and basically won him the naval battle I think by first getting T2 Navy a bit faster than than Thomas and going straight for his T2 subs as well rather than moving to Destros or or cruisers first so well played and go sign up for the next qualifier if you can make it and uh, yeah that's it for me I'll see you in the next video